Hamish, you are on the air with Eric and Jamie. How are you doing today, sir? Good evening. Good evening. Oh, good, good afternoon for us. Well, good day. I am somewhat, yes, well, I am somewhat troubled. Mm. The reason for that, I'm somewhat amused. <laughs> I watched, That's the, I watched the point. your show, I watched your show last week and saw Matt DeLahonte. That was two weeks ago. But, I mean, but, right, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. And, and you're worried that he's going to take over the show and you won't be able to see us. Don't worry. No, Hamish, you got us. We're, we're here and we're not going away, we promise. Mm -hmm. We're here for you. I was disappointed that I did not catch the show in time to call him uh. and destroy his atheism. Oh, However, man, that would have been cool, huh? Yeah, I mean, I, that would have been a really good call, actually. Mm. Okay, um, let's, 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 depending on let's, what you mean by destroy his atheism. Yeah, let's actually get to the point. What did you want to talk yeah. about? Well, I mean, it. Yes. Yeah. Well, may I continue? Yeah, so, yeah sorry. Yeah, yeah I, I just want to get to the question so we can interact with it instead of just going well, on about you destroying atheism. Yeah. No, what, what I was saying was I am disappointed by Matt Dillahunty's cowardice. I think that he is behaving in a very petty and juvenile manner, especially towards the challenge of the vegan community. Oh, man. It is man. Are you still doing the vegan, the vegan thing? Well, I'm... It's, uh, it's a pillar which atheism dies on. No, it's a pillar that you're not getting off of, man. Um, but you're like... I mean, do we still want to talk about veganism? I mean, well, I, I have another. Subject. Well, I mean, his, I his to, to be really clear, um, I think your statement was along the lines of, you feel that Matt is being cowardly and that you said childish. Pet I mean, we actually, I'll just say, hey, Hamish had a message for you on the show. It was along these lines, and you're not responding to the thing. Boom. If he were a brave man, he would take my call on his show. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, um, I feel like I, I need to say that it's not. There's there are three rotating hosts, and I think five. He could be talking about atheist rotating. debates where there are no calls. Oh, oh, yeah. Well, they don't take. Yeah. Yeah. They I, okay. I am of course talking about the atheist experience, yeah, which we, in context is the only one which makes sense. Uh, well, in well, context, then we need to do exactly what Jamie's saying. We have other hosts that are here. Watching us live, we absolutely adore them, and uh, we really don't They're, want to disparage them by calling it the Matt Dillahunty show, right? Yeah. I mean, I guess you don't care. I have. Yeah. Well. No, it is perfectly fine. I only wish to discuss something else today. Oh, other oh, okay. than veganism? Yes. Yes! Eric uh. just wants to eat his cheeseburgers in peace. I, 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 Hamish. Well, no, I, here, I, let, I just need something new. I need fresh. Give well, me fresh. Here, uh, Hamish, what did you want to talk about today? Well, I have become aware that Russell Glasser is in the audience. Ooh, I, yeah. I don't see him in the audience, and also that's a little bit of an interesting thing to say. Yeah. Um, I, okay, okay. Do you, well, are you preparing to call in a either. drone strike? Is that the... And you've got like a... <laughs> And specifically, are you preparing to talk to us, or are you going to make comments about Matt and Russell and not I'm, us? I'm here to discuss with you. Okay. Of course. Then let's do it. Yeah. I've discovered a, a child from my congregation showed me a clip of Matt discussing with Russell, and it it, it come it, it appears that Russell, despite being an atheist is perfectly fine with mutilating the penis of little boys. And I wonder how an atheist justifies circumcision without huh. appealing to the to, Lord. To, I mean, oh, to be man. clear, um, I don't think that an atheist would appeal to a god, just in an argument. Um, additionally, exactly. uh, okay. different what atheists, is, different ideas about morality. Exactly. I'm not Russell Glasser, so exactly. I can't refer to a clip that I'm not entirely familiar with and say so what reasoning or what he said. But also, uh, if you're asking me about, or if you're asking us about circumcision... Can, can I can I throw in one quick thing before we get into I was, the topic I was of circumcision? Just, oh, yeah. Really quick? Is it a foreskin? No, it's... 
Do you talk to people at your church about watching the atheist experience? A child. A child were. watched the atheist experience and talked about it at church. Yes. Okay. Yeah, that's real weird, dude. Nice. That's catch. real weird, no, it's, and it's, that it's, kind it's, of clues me good. that you really mm. might not be a real person, because that's super weird. You say that. I mean, when I was in church, I mean, I mean, the thing is, Hamish, I, I, I get it. The way you talk is is very much like a lot of the people that I spoke to when I went to church, and so I always. But yeah. kids talking about, I would have gotten whooped if I was talking about wow. atheist stuff at church. Methodist is an 18-year-old. Oh, okay, that's not yeah. a kid. Yeah. Wait, um, do you, uh, what denomination are you? Free Church of Scotland. Ah, uh, I know almost nothing about them. So. Yeah, no, I'll look it up, though. Okay, yeah. um, so, so, Mutilation of the Foreskins. Jamie, do you want to go first or do you want me? Well, not with that introduction. You go first. <laughs> <laughs> All right. You I mutilate do. the foreskin. So, um, do I think that it is... Or, or, or do you want me to speak to the morality of it? Or what do I just think about circumcision in general? I mean, there, there's like... What, what are you asking specifically, I'm, Hamish? I'm looking to address the moral aspect. However, first I would like to say... My congregation is aware of my calls to the atheist experience because I have made them aware. Oh, okay. do, do you enjoy a little bit of, uh, you know, I was on the show? Oh. Well, they enjoy watching the atheists be destroyed. Oh, of course. Ah. That's the line. Just, just wrecked. No, cool. Please continue. Okay. I mean, to um, be clear, our our call in is an open invitation. They're welcome to call in as well. Yes. Or please. email, or Actually, message on the Facebook, or tweet at me, as as many are want to do. Hamish, if you can get more people from your church to call and validate you, that would be amazing. Indeed. All right. The cool. Foreskin. The foreskins. The foreskin. Going to the, the you, you know, the, you can't forget about foreskins. Yeah. It's Sorry, just, the, the way you said that reminded me of Star um, Wars. And so, you know, I'm not sure how I'm going to hear that. <laughs> <laughs> I have I destroyed the show. I can't. Okay. Um, so, foreskins. Serious no, it's Sorry, really. Sorry. I, I, well, mean, I, I mean, here's the thing do, is, do you mean, is, okay. is it along the lines of like, female genital mutilation. There are people who would say it is. Um, do I? Well, well, you know, I think that I'm sitting in a pretty privileged place and I'm definitely um, influenced by a culture where circumcision is not just a religious thing, but it's a cultural thing. I also um, had braces as a teenager and I don't know if anyone can make a moral judgment on that, but that's definitely pretty weird for somebody coming in from the outside who doesn't know about braces. Um, yeah. So, what do I think about non-religious, um, non-religious circumcision? I think we need to contextualize it. Um, so, let's put this into concept, uh, into context. Well, I mean, okay. Okay. Um, so, okay. you have in the Torah, you have uh, several stories about how God ordered His people, ordered His chosen people, to cut off. Uh, the 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 little tag uh, like like it was uh, you know the, ripping it the off the covenant with Abraham. Uh, yes, um, so that they can identify themselves as part of the Lord's group. Um, I I really think that's kind of weird that you know he made that mistake in the first place. But I'll get back to that. Um, you have stories about um, people who were convinced that, oh, they're just going to become part of the tribe of Israel and they're going to circumcise themselves and then everybody's going to be happy and then while everybody's laid out and in pain after uh, having circumcised uh, themselves, they, um, attack. they got attacked and destroyed because really, I mean, the early religious, the, I mean, that's just brutal and terrible. I, I think when you trace the religious uh, history of circumcision, um, you have a whole lot of dishonesty you have a whole lot of cruelty. Um, so I, I guess I'm having trouble contextualizing why you think it's a moral issue on our end when you're saddled with over 2,000 years of cowardice when it comes to uh, cutting off the, the, the skin of, of the, 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 I mean, really. Um, so that's where I'm contextualizing it on a religious place, on a secular 
place? I don't know. I don't know because I haven't read about it and because it's the morally and ethically honest thing for me to say is I don't know. I don't know because I haven't read the studies on it on whether or not it ultimately hurts people. Um, I don't know um, how much uh, sensation it takes away or what complications can arise from it. I do know that doing it in a hospital is much more sterile, much safer, and drastically reduces the risk of infection and complication. Yeah, which um, does occur. Yeah, right? it, it does. Like, um, I do know that there are plenty of people who would say that things look aesthetically better um, circumcised or uncircumcised, everybody's got their preference. And some people make their decisions based on that. Do I think it's weird? Eh, a little bit. But, yeah, yeah, um, I was th th that's kind of where I'm Eric, at. Eric, did you bring up that last part to prevent me from jumping in? No, actually, I'm uh, done. It's all you, buddy. What I was going to say is the, the objection that I've heard to it that I think holds the largest weight is that um, it, it depends on the decision making behind it. Right? So the, the issue that I've heard that I'm most sympathetic to is one of bodily autonomy. Um, you're making a decision about an optional medical procedure uh, for an infant uh, who at that moment in time is not capable of expressing any interest or disinterest as to whether or not they would like to go through this, as I understand it, uh, well, I, I don't know another word besides cosmetic to use in this situation, but this uh, optional surgery. Is that, is that okay? I mean, I, I really don't know what else to say about it. Where, where, where are you at, Hamish? May I speak no? Absolutely. Of course. You go right ahead. Thanks. I mean, we, we will cut in if we like really, really want to, you know, bring up a point that you make, but yeah, go ahead. So, it is easy for the Christians and for the Jews to justify the circumcision. However, it seems utterly monstrous from the atheist perspective if you do not have God to appeal to for justification. How do How you can get an there? Atheist... Well, again, I mean, I, I... You, you keep using the phrase from an atheist perspective. We're right? atheists, and we didn't say that, so where are you getting that? Well, that and atheists disagree. Yeah, I mean, like, like we gave you our atheist perspective, and yeah. that isn't what you said, so well, I don't know how that holds water. We gave you our perspective, and so... I can explain atheist. this perfectly. Go ahead. Atheists such as yourself may be more reasonable in this facet. Thank you. Uh, I'll take that. By the atheist perspective, I merely mean the non-Christian, non-Jew perspective. And that is, without the Lord to appeal to, how can any atheist justify mutilation of a, of a child? And some atheists do, including those within your own ranks. We have rank. I mean, I was going to say, to be clear, are you, do you mean like members of the, what? Uh, no, no. Is there an army? I or? am the general of the atheists. Um, general, ha, your rank is so low. Yeah, right, I know. I, no, I, I, I have low ambitions, Jamie. Leave me alone. Uh, <laughs> you say that, but you're here. <laughs> um, no, I, I uh, when you say amongst your own ranks, do you mean that there are people that are atheists that give a justification for uh, parents yes. having their infants yes, circumcised? Yes, exactly. Okay. Even amongst the atheist community of Austin. Oh, I, I wasn't aware of that. How familiar are you with the members of the atheist community of Austin? I am or is it like a... Only, I am perhaps only dimly aware. However, I know enough to say at least one member Russell supports the procedure. That's why he brought up Russell. 
Yeah, yes. I think he said that at the uh, beginning, but we we kind of went away from it because I'm sort of like, okay, I yeah, I'm capable of talking to Russell about this yeah. later if that's the a choice that we both even decide. Agree to on their own morality. Well, it's not a moral it, issue very much, is it? Then well, at the present about, moment, you don't, uh, uh, Russell doesn't hold the office of atheist pope. Babies. What? Sorry. You don't find you don't consider the mutilation of infants to be a moral issue. I... To be clear, when you say you in that sentence, are you referring to Eric and myself or all atheists in yes, general? You in particular. Us in particular? Um, I can't get off of the hypocrisy that you're giving me when you belong to a church that endorses it. Like, how do we even start the conversation? Uh, so, so we gave our views on it. I would like your view. Right. I mean, we, we've been answering your questions. I feel like we've been doing pretty very good well, about about well, responding to you. So well. go ahead. Very well. Sometimes the Lord demands a sacrifice. <gasps> it is an yes. To be clear, when the Lord yes. demands the sacrifice, like a blood sacrifice. Well, I mean, the Old Testament, yeah, and also Jesus. So, 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 does the Lord still require sacrifices? Humans, humanity discovered a very long time ago that sacrifices were necessary for bargaining with the future and for instilling discipline and a connection with the Lord. Bargaining with it is still in our best interests to sacrifice much for. to the Lord Almighty. Then, like, I mean, so, sh sure, people do have like, the modern interpretation of tithe where they give 10% of their income, but well, to be clear, are we, we're still talking about blood sacrifices, or are we, question mark? We are talking about circumcision. Okay. Um, do you so, consider that, I mean, a kind of blood sacrifice for God, like beyond just a symbol of the covenant? between God and Abraham and his descendants that will number more than the stars in the sky? The procedure can indeed involve bloodshed and sacrifices must be made to appease Jesus. Okay, the Lord Whoa. Of so, the Father. wait, okay. circumcision is necessary, is, is circumcision one of the sacrifices that are necessary to appease Jesus? This is a sacrifice we make of our own volition in covenant with the Lord, the Father. All right. So, okay, that actually, do we know what the necessary number or amount of sacrifices are? And then is it like, is it all or nothing? Like we receive all of God's wrath if we don't do enough? Or is it like, okay, with 10 sacrifices, if we do nine, we get like one tenth of the Lord's wrath? All of us fall short of perfection, though some commit less sins than others. Okay, so wait, is it like a the number of sacrifices that are needed corresponds to the number of sins? Some sacrifices are greater and more appeasing than others. If you cut off the whole penis, is it like really good? Will you please be more respectful towards my beliefs? I, I, I'm not respectful to um, a idea of a God that would create everything, is all powerful, but cares about people cutting off pieces of their children's penises. Um, it tells me that, I mean, it's, 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 it's very interesting. If God wanted us to do something, he would just make us do it because he can. So either he doesn't love us enough to just do it, or um, that says something really, really cruel about the nature of the God that you're describing. I'm not really, well, I, 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 I really something. think that you do have an evolving view um, because you do Tell have all of these different points that you bring up and I really like that. Like you just make me happy. Hamish, you made my day with this. I, I, I'm, I'm glad. I'm glad we picked up. Um, do I think that the God that you're describing? Are you saying? Oh, oh, hold on, hold on. I got a better. I have a better one. Do you think that you know the mind of your God? Do you think that you really, truly know what your God wants? I will answer that in just a second. But first, mm. I would like to say, sometimes love means discipline. 
So it is not mutually exclusive to have a loving God and a God that requires sacrifice. Now I will answer your question. Okay, please. If you will repeat it, please. Sure, mm-hmm. sure. No, no, that, that's no problem. Um, I, I just I have to throw out that um, kids that have leukemia are not um, are, are are not deserving of that as a punishment, and that that's not something that a loving person would inflict on another person to make them better in any way. What I'm trying to get at, Hamish, because I don't want to what try and I'm, question. I'm trying not to give a gotcha. I'm trying to explain this to you. Um, you don't know the mind of your God, do you? Because that is a sin, right? Saying that you Lord. know the, 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 the mind of God, right? Or that uh, uh, you, you know, like, right? The entirety of the Lord's mind and glory greatly, nay, infinitely exceeds the capacity for any man or all of mankind to fully grasp. So, However, we understand his commands, we understand roughly what he expects from us, and we are without excuse. So, my point here hasn't really changed. Yeah, my, so if you, yeah. you, you have an understanding that God's mind is infinite and beyond as far as understanding the totality of it, Indeed. Okay. Yes. How do you know that you understand enough of it to be as confident as you are that, you know, the beliefs that you hold I, are accurate? I have an answer to this. How much of the universe do you know? Very little if you were looking at I mean, percentage. negligible. And yet, you know which planet you inhabit. We named it. Yeah. We've, Indeed, you know which species you are. We named it. Yeah, I don't say that I you know sufficiently understand the universe to yeah, but, but describe we, it. I mean, there's or nothing. You understand, you understand you can drink water and you must not drink mud. Uh, well, we only, we only understand that because we weren't the ones who drank the mud. The ones who drank the mud aren't around anymore. I'm sure right. there's a contest somewhere where people drink. Oh, don't. Uh, you understand language. You yeah. understand many things. I, I understand the comparison you're going for here, but Please, I Jamie, propose so a, an, an alternate one. What you're saying is there is a being with a mind, and I sufficiently understand that being's mind to come to this conclusion about what that being wants. And I'm saying, well, if you're saying that this being has so much more mind, infinitely more, I think is what you said, than what you understand, it would be kind of like me saying that I know what, you know, Oprah's favorite kind of sandwich is based on having seen her on television. Like most of her life isn't on television, so I don't. Again, I, I, if you're saying you only know a small part of an infinitely large thing, and you're saying, ah, but I understand enough of it to understand its will for me specifically, it's like, are you sure that there isn't another part of that infinite mind that applies to the will, to, to what God wants for human beings? Well, I can answer. I understand very little in total about human biology, but I understand enough to know that I must eat, I must sleep, I must imbibe the word of God, I must... I know many English words, but I do not know the entire language. We must, we do not need to know... Everything to know something, right? Yes. All right, so if there was a person that came to you that was eating McDonald's four times a day, and you, or that, that came to me and said, I'm eating McDonald's four times a day because I need to do that to stay alive. And I said, you know, that's not really a good way of eating. And they said, no, I know that in order to live, I need to eat, and I'm doing that. I know what I need to know. There isn't something more about eating that I could learn that would change the way I eat. I would say, no, there's more. Now I'm proposing to you that you've come to me and you've said, I understand what God wants 
for human beings. And I've said, okay, are you sure there isn't more information that would better inform what you think God wants for his people? I could learn. I could learn a hundred times as many things about mathematics as I currently know, but nothing will overturn five plus five is ten. Unless, um, may I? So are you oh, yeah. saying that you have an understanding of the very basic fundamentals that underlie all of God's will? I am saying I have a sufficient understanding mm -hmm. of the will of the Father, which suits my way of being. Indeed. <laughs> Amen. I'm sorry. So, um, the so I, I actually the the only thing other thing that I really wanted to bring up um, yeah was what do you think um, um, I, I yeah I apologize um, Hamish um, this actually is going to give a lot for the community to talk about and I appreciate it I think uh, this has been fun and I love yeah. that we're off of veganism um, I think it'll that, come back. I, I I just I you just want like a break escape. from it because it's just not it's not, from it's all not that interesting from to all. me. Oh. Um, but the foreskin I thing, like, I, I I just I cannot imagine. Maybe this is me with my just tiny tiny imagination. Can't imagine why infinitely. <laughs> That's funny. <laughs> no, I, I I can't imagine why a all-powerful, all-knowing, all-loving creator of the universe cares about what you do to your baby's penis. Um, that just feels like micromanagement to a level that you can't, I can't even begin to describe. Are you trying um, to insult that, that baby's manhood right now? Micromanage? Come on. Oh! <laughs> nice! Hamish, um, uh, I, you, you are a breath of air. Um, I just, I, I Did, appreciate You should you. write down the poetry that you... Well, I was going to say fresh air, but I don't know if that's... Um. Well, so, Hamish, <laughs> the thing that I would ask is, are you um, uh, willing to call back another time? And I know that you have emailed in the past. Are you willing to start a conversation with us over email as well as on the phone? Perhaps. And are you willing well, to, like see to see if people from your church will call in too? Well... I yeah. was about to say just that. Woo! Yeah. Look at that. Yeah. We agreed with something, Hamish. I uh -huh. would like your hosts on the Atheist Experience to be braver and take on my calls and the calls of my congregation. So, so that is totally up to them. Yeah, that and we have mm -hmm. a Facebook page for Talk Heathen, and I can, I can tell you right now that, that that's probably going to get multiple posts about this call. And we actually have somebody who was uh, is doing a debate soon who called in just earlier. Yeah. And, um, you know, I, the, it, it will speak to you your may. sincerity in the questions mm -hmm. if you are willing to have this conversation off air. Because as that well. means that you care and you're not just trying to get screen time. Yeah. Because that's one of the main big complaints we get about you, Hamish, is that you just want air time. Yeah, there, and, uh, there are people that think you're, you're only witnessing to us, if that's the phrase you would use, and to so, hear your voice, and we'd like to be able to counter with, no, he's engaged with us over email and ways that are less... Yeah. Sound good? Live on the air. Well, to be clear, that was a lot that we asked about. Yeah, um, seriously, I don't even know how he's going to... And we talked over <laughs> each other and you. Our apologies. I do value having an audience to convert with my ideas. However, I will respect and consider the email proposal, and I will speak to my congregation. Okay. Fantastic. Are you on Facebook at all? No. Not yet. Okay. Perhaps I will join. All right. Well, um, as far as the email goes, uh, that can be one of the things that we talk about. I can send a link to the group. And then on the Facebook page, that's, you know, uh, visible to a large audience of effectively the same audience that watches this, or at least large I believe, that, 
I believe that some members of my congregation have already called into the atheist experience and have been rejected. I mean, there's a, I, mm -hmm. I can't speak to that. Uh, yeah. I, I, that's when I, when beyond I, the scope of my understanding. And when I screened calls or knowledge, um, I should for say. the atheist experience, if I had a, a yeah. Christian caller, a religious caller who wanted to talk, I usually gave them press rhythms. Anyway, well, yeah. um, um, well I, I hope that they get through there, and they, we're happy to take their calls here. Um, yep. And we look forward to talking to you in yes. the future. Uh, Hamish, do you have the email address? Oh. Don't have I him give it over so. here. No, 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 as in, do you have ours? Because he can reach out to us initially, and then we can... I believe I do, yes. Okay. Awesome. Thank you, gentlemen. All right. Thank you. Thank have you, Hamish. Perhaps I, will, perhaps I will speak to Matthew later on. Perhaps you'd be okay with speaking to us and our audience. And yes, the he is not a power. He will speak to them. you. Okay. Take care. Goodbye. Bye. Um, oh my god, I love it. Uh, I, you know what I bet? It's if just he calls in and confusion. the call screener puts him on the line and Matt is aware of the number of times that he's been like, if Matt's, what are you, chicken? Come out and, and debate me on this show that you host. Chicken, I, I can only imagine what kind of response. Well, I can also imagine Matt being like, you are so far below me, why would I dignify time with you? That's that's one of the possible responses I was imagining just now. <laughs> yeah, um, but hey, we'll we'll see.